If you would be willing to pay at least $50 to see this act, stand up now, okay? Stand up, guys. You can see on the screen we have a demand curve. Now, there's no points in the demand curve yet. Basically, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna have an auction here and effectively we're gonna keep the price rising and Jay's gonna punch in the numbers and hopefully we're gonna see something that resembles a demand curve. Now, oh geez, we've got a lot of people standing actually. It's, this is gonna have to be a very, very rough guesstimate. I'm gonna say 430. So put 430 at $50, okay? So we have our first point on the demand curve. Now I'm gonna raise the price. When you are no longer willing to pay, you sit down, okay? I'll feed the information to Jay, and Jay will create our demand curve. I'm gonna speak even faster than normal, and I can justify it, because this is an auction. Okay, so we're starting at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. $100. I think we lost 10, make that 420. 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. Didn't lose too many more, it lost about the same, 410. Let's jump straight to 200, straight to 200. Okay, that's, let's wipe that a few more. Okay, now I think we've got probably about 280, okay. So, from 200 to 300 to 400 to 450 to 500. Okay, that's wiped a lot of you out, that's good. Oh, look at that, wow. Okay, there. That was a tipping point right there, guys. I could almost count you now, but I'm a bit lazy, so you're just gonna still do round numbers here, guys. I reckon at the moment we're probably left with about 80, okay. 80 at 500J. 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. Okay, good. Now I can definitely count. All right, we've got one, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I think we have 24 at 1,000, Jay. 24 people, okay? Seeing a nice inverse slope there. 11, 12, 13, 14, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700, 1,800. I'm gonna ask you who you wanna see pretty, pretty soon, guys. That gets you to sit down, good. 1,900, $2,000. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We've got 11 at $2,000, okay? Okay, now it's just fun. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Now we're getting silly, guys. 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Let's just stop there and basically go through. Who would you see? Which, which artist, girls? Probably Red Hot Chili Peppers. Red Hot Chili Peppers? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Come on, we need, we need a better answer than that. I'll come back very soon. We've got Red Hot Chili Peppers? Beatles. Beatles? What have we got over here, man? Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, right up the back, man. What have we got? Drake. Drake, okay. Drake, okay. Okay, there we go. Drake, Chili Peppers, Beatles. Now, do we have an answer here? We're going to need an answer eventually. Journey. Journey. Alrighty, give them a round of applause, guys. What do we notice about the demand curve here? Is there an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded? Yes or no? Good. As the price goes up, the quantity demanded falls. That's what we want to see. Is the relationship constant? Is it? No, it's not. What we notice at low prices, there's very little drop off. 50 to 100 to 150, we go 434, 24, 10. At 200, it drops. And at 500, boom, it goes off a cliff. At 500, a lot of people thought, well, I'm no longer willing to pay the price, they're gonna sit down. So there's very little movement early, and then at this range here, there's a lot of movement, and then basically once we get to 1,000 and 2,000, uh, we find here that there are a few people left standing. Let's compare our demand curve with a normal demand curve, okay, and see how we go here, guys. Fairly similar. The big difference is at 400, we still had a lot more people still standing. So what we find here is that our demand curve in class basically follows the principle we set out to illustrate. Low price, people are more willing to pay. At a high price, they're less willing to pay. As the price goes up, QD falls. But it doesn't fall at an equal rate. What we see if we look at the bottom point of the curve here, at $50, I think we had 430 people standing. So 85, 90% of the class were standing at the start, okay? As we rise the price between 50 to 200, this is where it starts to matter. There's a negative slope, which is important, but with this curve, people begin to sit down uh, between 50 and 200. You guys are a little bit different. You guys started to really sit down between 200 and 500. So the price at which you became very sensitive 
and began to set down occurred a little bit higher up, but the principle still worked. And what we find here at the highest price in our fictitious demand curve, there is only two people willing to stand at $400. We still had plenty left, but we had a bigger class as well. Okay, So the range at over which price matters a lot is basically where the action is. When we get to elasticity in chapter four, we'll understand that in more detail. Okay, But this is important in terms of pricing because if you're selling movie tickets or concert tickets, you need to know what are the range of prices at which people are willing to still buy. You go too high, you don't sell. You go too low, you might sell a lot, but you might not make enough money. So this information is important to businesses when deciding how to set prices.